Welcome to Code Pink's uh, weekly webinar, uh, What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, every Wednesday at noon. Um, and I am very pleased to have with us today Calixto Ortega, who is the president of Venezuelan Central Bank. And uh, we are going to talk today about the situation of the Venezuelan uh, gold reserves uh, that are currently in the vaults of, uh, of the Bank of England. For those of you who are not familiar with the situation, uh, Venezuelan Central Bank made a legal claim to the Bank of England to try to force the bank to release part of the $1.2 billion in gold reserves that this entity froze and refuses to release, and that belongs to the Venezuelan people. Uh, the government of Venezuela made a deal with, uh, has a deal with the UN uh, Development Program uh, for them to administer, administer these funds and to be used for Venezuela's coronavirus response. So welcome, Calixto, and uh, please uh, talk, uh, talk to us a little bit about um, this legal battle in the UK. All right. Uh, thank you and hello to your audience. Uh, my regards from Caracas, uh, Venezuela, from the downtown Caracas, from the office of the president of the central bank. And this is a very, very uh, meaningful uh, place right now because uh, what's been happening is that a group of people are actually saying that, uh, that the board, uh, the ones that come every day to this uh, building to work are not the board. Uh, that the board of the central bank, uh, it's, it's formed by another, another group of people that actually they don't even live in Venezuela. Um, and this is the whole situation that we are fighting right now. I would like to start by saying that the issue is not uh, related to the government of President uh, Nicolás Maduro. The issue is a, it's a, 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 a legal, uh, the Bank of England had been served with a legal claim uh, by our, our lawyers, our representatives, uh, following uh, the Bank of England decision to deny Venezuelan Central Bank access to our international reserve, particularly in the scenario of the COVID-19. Uh, on April, uh, we go to the Bank of England, uh, informing them that we were deciding to use uh, around 1 billion euros of our international reserve uh, to liquidate the equivalent in gold so the proceeds could be transferred to the United Nations Development Program for them to do the procurement of medicines, uh, food, uh, health-related equipments, and so on. The basic, the basic uh, uh, response that countries are, are uh, exercising against the, against the COVID-19 in the, in the pandemic situation. Um, the Bank of England uh, refused and they claim that they have some confusion because they have received uh, uh, information from another group of people saying that I am not actually the president of the central bank uh, and that there is someone else that is the president of the bank. So we, we start the claim and uh, we hope to receive uh, a positive, a just decision that it's uh, aligned with reality uh, and uh, it will be in favor of the Venezuelan people. So the, the pre pre preliminary issues that have been discussed the last two days are related to who runs Venezuela, who is actually the president of Venezuela who is the head of the state and the head of the government, because the other group, even though they don't live in Venezuela, even, even though they don't come to this building, 
uh, they are saying that they are the central bank go, uh, board because uh, a gentleman that last year self-proclaimed president uh, actually uh, select them to to be the board of the central bank, and we and the judge basically is doing what the the law, the English law system. Uh, uh, says that is basically listening to both uh, uh, parts, listening to the arguments, and so for for him to make a, a decision that would be uh, very important for this case. Our position on is basically you know the reality that there is only one functioning government in Venezuela. There is only one minister of finance, defense minister, treasurer, health minister, uh, all, you know, all what you need to be a government. And it's the government of President Maduro. So that's basically uh, uh, what's happening right now. You talk about this uh, claiming about uh, who, are, who is the legitimate government of Venezuela. We uh, just read uh, this uh, extracts from the book of jo John Bolton uh, claiming that the UK uh, foreign minister wanted to help promote the US sanctions policy by freezing uh, Venezuelan gold deposits. But the Bank of England uh, claims that it's independent. So uh, how can this claim affect the outcome of the lawsuit? Yes. Uh... It is not uh, a common ground to think that uh, Mr. Bolton could be a resource of uh, accurate information or, 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 or rational opinions. But it's true that he basically uh, uh, described uh, an event that is very important for this case. He basically says that uh, they were playing politics against Venezuela and part of the strategy was to block uh, the Central Bank of Venezuela for, so for, for, because according to, to, to their strategy it was, good, it was a good thing to do and, and in order for uh, you know, make, make a regime change happening in Venezuela. Uh, all this, uh, all this. Uh, if this was true, is basically a proof that all what happened was a, a political strategy. And if the if this was true, then it's a proof also that the Bank of England pollute with the government of the U.S. and the government of of, of the U.K. Uh, uh, Against against the Venezuelan people, ultimately the the the, the you know all these uh, all these policies, uh, sanction policies, block block blocks of uh, funds are uh, against the Venezuelan people. Uh, it is very far from the truth to say that sanctions only uh, affect the the uh, public officers or the ones running the the institution. Of course, they make our life more uh, difficult because at the end we have an institutional responsibility to, to you know, to, to operate. Uh, but the, the, at the end, it's the Venezuelan people who are suffering. So how could you possibly say that no to a request of getting funds to respond to the, to the pandemic, even so in a, in a, in a strategy, in an attempt to, to release uh, uh, the funds, we, uh, we said to the Bank of England, you know what, you don't, you don't need to worry about how are we going to uh, allocate the funds. Even though it's not your problem because those are Venezuelan assets. But in order for you to, to have less things to worry, we are going to work with the, with, with the United Nations. So the UNDP is a neutral institution. It doesn't play politics. 
is no is a it's is no one side or the other side. They just want to help the Venezuelan people. It was good for us because it will represent access to market prices. Because right now, if you want to buy something for Venezuela, people will charge you in, incredible high prices because of the uh, worries they have to have lo to have to pay lawyers to defend themselves when the when the U.S. Uh, government will claim that they are doing something against the law. So, and they say, and they say that it was not possible. This is something that, uh, that uh, Elliot Abrams, the representative, uh, special representative for Venezuela says uh, all the time, like people, like companies are afraid to make business uh, with Venezuela because of the cost of the lawyers. And they're proud of that as if it was something that it was good and it was working for somebody else that uh, making uh, a collective punishment for the Venezuelan people. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I think, I think only time will describe exactly uh, where were the, the, uh, the internal discussions and how exactly uh, they were thinking. I think this book gives you uh, some examples of, of this uh, way of thinking. Uh, the chapter of Venezuela, I personally read it and it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, it's an interesting case for, I don't know, for schools. Of, I'm not sure if about public policy, but maybe some uh, psychiatrics and psychology because the way this gentleman's uh, describe uh, how to work and how to interact with Venezuela, it shows like a, a, a feeling of, of supremacy, of if, like they were above the law, above the international law, above the, you know, all the, the international arrangement that had been uh, for years being put together by nations. Yeah, like uh, Trump said about Venezuela, supposedly that Venezuela was part of the U.S. So, yeah, anyway, so um, what are your expectations uh, around this case? And if, uh, if you lose this case, can you appeal? Is there an international body that could address the case, like the World Trade Organization or something? Well, I am uh, cautiously optimistic. I have to be realistic. Uh, at the same time, remember that what is being discussed if I am the president of the central bank and I am talking to you from my office. So it is very difficult to imagine uh, uh, and, and, at the end, and when I have to interact with the government of Venezuela, uh, I, met, I have to meet with the Minister of Finance which is in the next building. I have to meet with the vice president, executive vice president, vice president which is in front of, the, of this building. I have to meet with the economic vice president that is three blocks from, from this building. So what, I'm, uh, what, what we're trying to describe is just reality. It's just fact checking. Uh, because the other government, supposed government, is, is a government that only exists on papers that only controls four or five Twitter accounts. And that's it. So my expectations are, you know, cautiously, cautiously optimistic because since this is politics, I can only imagine the pressures that are being right now, you know, all the strategy right now being developed in London from other countries that, you know, don't want this to, to be ruled in a realistic way. Um, but yes, since our case is just fact-checking reality, uh, we are, you know, we, are, we have reason to, reasons to be optimistic. Um, yeah, well, finally I wanted to ask you about the situation of the sanctions, because the critics of the Venezuelan government have often uh, cited uh, socialist policy as the reasons uh, for a Venezuela current economic crisis, yet they rarely uh, factor fluctuation of oil prices or the sanctions that, or even the, the inflation that uh, is induced. Can you briefly tell us uh, uh, 
what are Venezuela's biggest economic challenges today and some of the measures that are being uh, taken to overcome, overcome them? Yeah, uh, the, the most, the most uh, damage has been, uh, has been uh, you could describe the most related to sanctions. The, most, the, the worst part of, of the situation is related to, to sanctions. This, uh, you know, a policy that it's, that it's illegal. You have many, many uh, institutions, international institutions. It's against the law to do, to do what they are doing against banks, right? And it's politics. You could, you could see, for example, what happened last, last week, where basically uh, the U.S. government said that the, uh, the International Criminal Court was going to be targeted uh, with sanctions people that work there, their family members, because, you know, they just, they took the decision. It's like, it's so, I mean, in the, in the, the reality of the, of, the, of the decisions are, are impressive. And, and uh, the damage that it caused in the case of Venezuela, you know, there are, ex there are exercises here trying to, to, to summarize, to put together a number of the costs. Uh, of the sanction, it's 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 a. Uh, yeah, I think it's very difficult to to. It's going to be a very difficult exercise because the it's the economy of Venezuela has been destroyed because of this. You cannot you pass from uh, selling three million barrels per day at one hundred dollars price, so three hundred million dollars a day. Uh, is, that is like three billion dollars for ten days, nine billion dollars per month, more than one hundred billion dollars per year. To last year, maybe five billions. So it's a reduction of ninety-five percent of your income. Imagine, imagine a, a, a household that is living with uh, one thousand dollars. Well, one thousand dollars in in Washington is too little. Let's say uh, five thousand uh, uh, dollars per month, and then and then for some reason uh, the income of the household is going to be uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, and you have to pay for school, you have to pay for healthcare, you have to pay for for everything because. Uh, the the income evaporate but you you know you exist you have to you have to live and it's a it's a it's a criminal it's a criminal uh, action against the venezuelan people what we have to do well we have to resist we have to fight legally wherever there is room for it and and uh, try to do our best on this resistant exercise until uh, uh, a more rational policy could be actually uh, uh, put in place and that the Venezuelan bilateral relations with other countries, including the US, could be exercised on the basis of self-respect, self-determination, like normal and regular bilateral relations. Um, but what are the concrete actions taken by the government? The concrete actions taken? I, I cannot talk. No, I mean, uh, I mean uh, of the government. we we are. I mean, we are trying to to do our best with the tools we have that are very limited because of this situation uh, uh, in order to have what the results that we had had the last, the last year. So for example, since two years ago, things, uh, so the level of, um, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, uh, level of, uh, um, how many products do you see on the stores when you when you go to buy? So when you go to, when you visit a store, how many how many of the products are you looking are you looking to buy are actually there uh, offered to you? Those statistics have, 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 have are getting better before the pandemic. Um, 
um, uh, there is some relative uh, numbers that are that are getting uh, better and, and in the case of PDVSA, it is public information that they are uh, producing gasoline now and you know we there are things that have been uh, uh, solved using uh, you know the Venezuelan uh, labor and Venezuelan the Venezuelan people that is trying to solve all these all these issues. Um, so thank you so much. It's been already uh, twenty minutes of uh, conversation with uh, Calixto Ortega, and uh, thank you so much, Calixto. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I just wanted to remind you real quick that last year, Code Pink uh, sent a letter to the UK Department for International Development, signed by many of you, um, saying that uh, the sanctions are deadly and that uh, the only way uh, forward in Venezuela is through dialogue between all Venezuelans. That is still the case today. But we were thinking of updating this petition and asking uh, the Bank of England to release this money and give it to the UNDP so they can administrate these funds and Venezuelans can fight COVID-19 uh, with their own resources. Um, as you well know, uh, the US has not been a good neighbor to Venezuela and uh, Venezuela is one of the countries that has been hit severely with the criminal unilateral uh, coercive measures imposed by the US. So stay tuned and um, uh, once we uh, update this petition, uh, check our webpage at www.codepink.org and through our uh, Facebook uh, page, don't forget to follow us also at uh, look for a good neighbor policy, new good neighbor policy uh, at face in Facebook and uh, and yeah, and uh, see you next week for another episode of what the F is going on in Latin America uh, every Wednesday at noon. Thanks.